Jalen McMillan. I I am I'm grabbing double Jalen's. I have the exact same mm-hmm. exposure to uh, Jalen McMillan as I do Jalen Polk. Uh, both sitting right at seventeen percent, and um, he just seems like he can just be the Swiss Army knife kind of guy. Uh, Trey Trey Palmer, total jag. Uh, not a guy that he is going to have to like do a lot to surpass. Uh, Palmer, not like I, I'm not sold. And the, there's some. There's some people floating the idea that uh, that that uh, Chris Godwin returned the slot that we've all been excited about could be blocked by some degree to Jalen McMillan. Uh, I'm just uh, as a whole excited about uh, McMillan as a talent, and I, I have a lot of him. I think he starts the season pretty or is pretty quickly uh, becomes the clear third wide receiver here, and uh, pretty big upside if one of these guys goes down. Yeah, the quote so far is that he quote put on a show in camp uh, that Baker Mayfield called him a young stud with a ton of potential. And McMillan himself, I love this one. One of my biggest goals for camp is to make Baker trust me with everything in his body. Every single thing in his body he wants him to trust him with. I don't know exactly what level he is going to there, but I love that he is that committed uh, to building that trust. And it sounds like Baker has been peppering him early and often at every layer of the field. He has been working outside, inside, moving around, which he could do at college as well. So this is a guy that I do not have nearly enough of, but we know Liam Cohen coming over from that Sean McVay tree where they love three receiver sets. Seems like a no brainer that he's going to probably be out there for 80% or so of the routes. He's a talented guy. I know he's behind two monsters in Evans and Godwin, but sounds like he's got some dog and some talent himself is what the headlines and a dog waiting to be unleashed in the Bucks offense was the quote uh, that the headline of the article, come on, you got nothing more for me. I'm all in. I definitely need to get higher. I'm jealous that you have 17%. I'm at like five or six and I need more uh, right now. So that's definitely one I am targeting. The last receiver on here, this one can be pretty quick, but we talked about the Bengals wide receiver three being a must track situation. And right now it does seem like Andre Yoshevich is the top guy. They quote said, nobody has seen a uh, fastest improvement of any player he's ever had said at the receiver coach. He also mentioned that of chase Brown as well. It sounds like he is locked in right now to that three receiver role. Now Burton is getting some hype as far as I've seen as well in camps and he's making some plays uh, but this seem like right now, Yochevis is getting that shot to be the number three guy. I know you're a little more in tune with the Bengals. Is that what you've been reading? Or have you seen anything about Burton leaping him? Uh, or do you think Yochi could be that kind of – he's still not getting drafted right now. I don't know. It seems like a, a pretty interesting spot to take some stabs. Yeah, so I, I would definitely start recommending to to tar- start taking stabs on Burrow teams. Uh, he, the first couple of days of training camp, getting almost all of the slot work, uh, that wasn't really something that was a part of his game in college or in year one in the NFL. But if he's going to be getting the, the slot work, we know how much 11 personnel the Bengals like to run. It was, they were third or fourth in the league last season in uh, 11 personnel usage. So, uh, my, my, my take on it and some other guys, uh, Joe Goodberry, namely, who's very tuned in with the Bengals. I, I would guess that uh, as of now and likely the most likely outcome is that this is some sort of rotation for the third wide receiver. And uh, but if anyone's going to run away with it, it would probably be Yoshivas. And uh, so definitely a guy who you should be taking stabs on late in draft, super interesting athletic profile. And if he's out there regularly, he will be a value considering he's free. Yeah, absolutely. I did mention, I thought that was the last receiver note, but I did want to quickly mention, type one in real quick, Michael Wilson and Greg Dortch are running with the ones ahead of Zay Jones. Now it's so early. We could see how this goes. I still like Zay Jones as a player, uh, but it does sound like Dortch is locked into that slot role. Also getting some backfield snaps was the latest report I loved. And I, I know uh, we got a couple of people on staff. Liam loves the Dorcher chamber himself. I love that name. Uh, but also Michael Wilson playing ahead of Zay Jones is really interesting too. An offense that I think could not really take off. So just wanted to mention real quickly, uh, we're talking about all the risers here. I thought those were a few names to bring up. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.